scores of EFF members are expected to fill up the FNB Stadium in Soweto, where they will commemorate 10 years of existence. So we're going to be joined by Zoom uh, by a political analyst to unpack the uh, Freedom Fighters 10th year anniversary celebrations. Vigile Belekazi, good afternoon. Thank you for your time with us here on the ACBC. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon to viewers at home as well. I wonder, you know, as we age closer to the 10th um, year celebrations of the EFF, we can take a step back and really look at the party, political party's influence in South Africa's political landscape to date. Well, I mean, um, if you look back at the formation of the economic freedom fighters, one of the strategic entry points for them was um, ideological, right? The economic freedom fighters immediately entered the political space and they're very clear that they're an anti-imperial organization, right? That is um, totally against a uh, white monopoly capital and that their agenda is about economic freedom in our lifetime, uh, which is something that in their view was not attained by the liberation struggle that was led by the African National Congress um, and, and, and generally the, the liberation organizations like the United Democratic Front and so on. So that, in my view, made the EFF to stand out in the politics of the country, but also to speak to the moment in, in that by the time they were formed in 2013, um, the country was already going through deep-seated frustrations around the issues of service delivery, around uh, the fact that the majority of South Africans in this democratic dispensation were becoming deeper, uh, I mean, uh, more deeply um, unemployed and uh, not necessarily getting involved in the strategic sectors of the economy. So when the EFF then rose into power, they spoke into the conscience of the masses um, and I think that is something that has managed to make uh, citizens of South Africa, those who have become members of the EFF and followers of the EFF, to sort of listen to this mandate because it was fresh and uh, it was agitation, it was contestation of political space um, in a way that, in my view, really spoke to what South Africans were needing to hear at that time. Figile, but on the back of those sentiments, because when we trace the ideology, perhaps also the influences of its leader, given the, uh, the founding values of the party as well, I wonder if you could speak to whether they are still intact in relation to land and economic freedom. And uh, yesterday at the address um, at the Gopi in Marigana, there were sentiments about 1994 being um, it's um, 2024, which, which is a slogan that is also shared by Rizam Zanzi. And, and as I really want to understand, you know, the dynamics unfolding on that front in relation to the founding values of the party. Look, I mean, there the, 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 the are those of us who are saying on the public domain that when the EFF was formed, uh, you know, it rose into power through campaigns like Pay Back the Money, um, you know, uh, around the anti-corruption stance and, and, the, and the other issues that I've mentioned, particularly around the land question and uh, not wanting to then form, form, enter into coalitions with any political party in the country. But I think the voices of South Africans is getting more and more divided, in, you know, around the positionality of the EFF in that regard, because then what you saw subsequently was um, a softening of that approach that said, uh, Ours is an unnegotiable role in this society. We will not partner with any organization that is, kept, that is, that is supporting and sponsoring white monopoly capital. So you started seeing with the coalition politics, the EFF softening its voice, um, you know, in relation to partnering with organizations like the African National Congress, for example. At some point, they were willing to also enter into partnership with the Democratic Alliance. And it started to sort of shake the political space because then people were saying, we voted for you because we we're very clear that we wanted a, an organization that will stand strong around the, you know, imperialism and the post-colonial post state. And that will challenge white monopoly capital. Now they are sleeping in the same bed with people like your DA and, uh, and, the, and the African National Congress. Fortunately for the EFF, the DA was not 
at all interested to enter into that kind of a relationship. And I think it has salvaged the situation. Uh, in a way, it has brought back that dignity to those who are beginning to doubt the EFF uh, in that regard. So that's, that's the one thing. And then you also started to see the EFF going back into conversations with the former president, Jacob Zuma, right? Uh, when they were saying pay back the money, the country was happy and excited to say, my goodness, you know, we have this organization now that is challenging the issue of corruption in the body of the former president, Jacob Zuma, who's having like multitudes of cases in his name. And then, then, he, he, and then the, 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 the commander in chief goes and has tea with the former president, Jacob Zuma. And that thing again questioned the issue of the EFF and so on. And the VPS uh, scandal, you know, of the deputy president, uh, Floyd uh, Shivambo, again tested the character of the EFF on the public domain, you know, in relation to issues of uh, of corruption uh, and, and, and all the values that the EF stands for. So those things started to shake a little bit the political sphere in relation to, uh, is it possible to trust uh, the leadership of the Commander-in-Chief Julius Malema and what the EFF stands for? Because then some people started to say, the EFF says this today and then tomorrow they say something else, right? So, so yeah. that is there. And I think, and of course, many other things when Commander in Chief went into a wedding with his wife, uh, with uh, one of the controversial figures in politics, you know, um, and, and, and is his friend. Those kinds of things started to then make South Africans to, see, to say, can we trust the Commander in Chief? So, so that is the state of our politics. And, and I think heading towards 2024, and then you also started hearing other people saying, "Is it could it be that uh, the economic freedom fighters is perhaps taking advantage of the emotional vulnerabilities of the people of Marikana, right? Because uh, the EFF rose from the politics of of, of what happened in Marikana, the, the murders uh, and the massacre that happened in Marikana. And now that they are celebrating 10 years, they go back to the people of Marikana, uh, slaughtering, you know, of 100 cows and uh, doing uh, rituals that obviously would speak to the sentiments of the widows um, of the people of Marikana that have passed on. So there's that, there's that, there's that. Whether then the EFF still stands for its values or not, uh, my take of it, uh, fellow South Africans, is that I, I think that if you look at the manner in which the EFF is engaging at the National Assembly, the kinds of demands that the EFF has been making on the public domain is, is something that is still unique. I think that in our politics, in our body politic, the EFF still really stands out as strong as an opposition party, and I think is doing what we are demanding of an opposition party to do. Um, you know, although there are all those things that are making South Africans to doubt its body politic. Um, and, and I think it still remains then a unique political party where people are saying perhaps it could be an alternative to us 2024. And then others, of course, are saying they are still junior in terms of management. They may be strong ideologically, but I think they still have a lot to learn in terms of how to manage a country of our, of, of our nature, you know. And, and maybe they would need to then partner and enter into stronger coalitions with countries that have governed, like, I mean, political parties that have governed, like your DA and so on. But they don't see each other you know, with the DA. Um, and, and, and then my contestation was that perhaps it may be strategic uh, that EFF looks into a possibility of a coalition with the ANC mm. for obvious reasons. You know, reasons that their policies are similar. The EFF is a baby, really, of the ANC. You know, and, and um, but again, it's, it's issues of corruption. It's almost like yeah. you're going back to your own vomit. Is that kind of a thing. So it is disgusting at the same time. Figile, thank you for that update and really weighing in on the dynamics unfolding in relation to the EFF celebrating 10 years in the political um, landscape of South Africa. Their formation strides it up and taken an early way to from here as we edge closer to 2024 elections.